Hey, I'm Cal, back with regular story mode, right about when my game crashed last time. Um, I'm going to be continuing the time lapse. We're about halfway through coming from writing to Bakersfield. Um, Bakersfield should be right there. Yeah. We're, so we're about halfway through. Um, so the time lapse is going to continue probably for the first part of this video. And then I'll come back when we get to Bakersfield and hopefully just do a quick little run down this way somewhere. Um, so yeah, hope you're enjoying the time lapse. I don't know. And I'll talk to you when we get to Bakersfield. And here we are in Bakersfield. Sorry about that bit right at the beginning. I kind of completely forgot how to drive. Yeah, trucks, they, they just really don't like turning in the grass, do they? Uh, right, so my hope is to get a job straight to Oxnard. And then that'll probably finish off this video. I feel like I was not moving that fast before. Alright, and there is one dog start, look at that. Diesel. Well, I guess we're taking some diesel then. Well, at least it matches the truck. Sort of. I are fourth.
All right, now I seem to remember this entrance, this exit being quite a pain. So that was also going the other way, so. Might not be so bad over here. Hope you enjoyed the time lapse. I mean, it is a quite pleasant drive. Just takes a little while. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ugh. Dang. Oh my goodness, thank you, Peterbilt. That would have been inches just then. I'm like, there's not even anything I can do. You know, there's no slip lane. You just kind of merge straight onto the frickin' highway. You know, and, and since I can't stick my head out the window like I can in ETS2, I can't see that a truck is coming. But fortunately, he got out of the way. Now, let's see if we can get some of your good racing going. Assuming I can catch up to the competition first. I do think I'm ganging on the third place truck, just very slowly. Oh, there he is. Target sighted. Target sighted. Challenger excited. <laughs> I love the racing element. It's not very good, but it's still fun. Come on, Sterling, go! Catch the thing! I don't know what it is yet. Don't change lanes, Peterbilt. It's Peterbilt. Haha! -ha. Be overtaken by my Sterling, and then what? Hey. No. I don't know where that other car went. There it is. Ah. Frickin' Lincoln. Starting to develop an irrational hatred for Lincoln. Ah, that was too early. Dang it, truck! Ah! Now I gotta chase him back down. That was a good opportunity, too. That's okay, I got a shortcut when we get into Oxnard. Dang it! can't shift that early. 
See, this is the sort of stuff that makes me want a new truck. Because if I had a more powerful transmit or engine, that wouldn't have messed me up so bad. That's a really pretty blue beater belt. Blue beater belt. That is a really pretty blue beater belt. <laughs> Oh, still too early. Also on a hill. Go, Sterling! You have a Mustang on you, you should be able to go faster. Go! Chase the things! And now. If we could just bring fifth gear down just a little bit, that'd be great. In fact, we might be on a hill. I can't get any speed back. We've all kind of come together. Uh, let me join in the convoy. See if I can get some slipstream. Slipstream actually works in ATS, by the way. I don't know if I ever actually mentioned that, but it does. If you get right behind another truck, you will get a little bit of a slipstream. I don't know if it works in this game, though. Because Bronco and I definitely slipstreamed off of each other when we were racing before. Don't know if he realized that's what was happening, but... You know, it's not like insane, like, arcadey amounts of slipstream like a GTA V, but... There is some realistic... You know, air resistance is realistically modeled in that game. Or at least semi-realistically modeled. Or no, wait. My shortcut doesn't work going this way. It only works going the other way. If we were coming from uh, Santa Barbara, then I could use the shortcut. Why am I having so much trouble keeping speed? I was doing 75 earlier. This intersection will mess you up if you're new to this map. Because there's going to be signs come up that say right lane exit only for Oxnard. You don't want to go that way. You will end up losing the race. That's this intersection up here where 126 splits off. I got tripped up like that by that a few times in the past. See that sign with the yellow on it? So you'll see, that's the only sign with Oxnard, and it says exit only, go that way on 126. That is the longer way around. Well, it's not longer distance wise, but it takes longer, because it's much twistier. Now that was a good move. See? Every once in a while, the racing in this game can be genuinely good. Especially if you have the traffic turned all the way up, so all the trucks are trying to fight through the heavy traffic. Which I don't think I do right now. I actually have a pretty decently powered truck for this sort of racing where they still have more power than me, but only slightly. Ah, I was going to make a wide Sterling, but I don't want to damage the load. But 
like he's going to come back in front of me as soon as he gets past them. He's got a seriously powerful truck. I don't know what he was doing in third that whole time. I'm going to want to be in front, and we're close to the end. Use the booster! Alright. Because otherwise, he was going to jump in front of me, and it was going to screw me up. In fact, I might still be going a little too fast. Then, oh, I'm a little low on fuel. Accelerate out of it. So you gotta use the booster strategically, because it does burn a lot of fuel. Please get past that van. There we go. It's interesting, they have commercials for CS, which is Cummins, and, you know, but they're talking about cars, not trucks. And as far as I know, Cummins is the only company that actually does make sort of not, like, non-commercial engines. So I guess that's kind of, like, accurate. Alright, you want to be nice and slow through here. These corners can get nasty. Especially if the frame rate decides not to play nice. I need your help. You hear me? I'm not helping you, Matt. See, the problem with that is they chase you with guns, and I've never been able to get away from them. And you have to cancel your current job, which I don't want to do anyway. Sorry, Matt. Can't. Got business to do. You know, like, I would help, but from a gameplay perspective, it's just not worth it. Because she ends up making it out anyway. You see her in a later mission. And it means you get to go and, uh... Like, the thing is... It doesn't matter either way to the story. The story always considers you as having gone to save her, whether you did or not. So, I just don't, because, you know, how much is this paying? Five, six, seven, maybe? Thousand? I don't want to give that up just to go and get myself blown up. And, you know, the other times, I was driving a significantly better truck than I am now, and I'm still not able to outrun them. This is a nasty corner. Can't tell you how often I have gone around this way too fast and ended up in the grass, or in another car. You can tell I do this running to Oxnard a lot. <laughs> I mean, this is where your main office is, so you tend to spend a lot of time around here. And there we go. That's a race one. That was a hard-fought battle, too. That Peterbilt was giving me some grief. So he seems to have gotten lost. Oh, there he is. He's coming in. Oh, no, that's the Kenworth. Oh, the Peterbilt didn't even come in second. Oh, there you go, 24 grand. I wasn't about to just go throw that away to get shot at. 
However, I am not taking another run right now because I want to go to the office. So I'll go ahead and show you my shortcut from Santa Barbara. If you're coming from Santa Barbara, you get off at this exit, just going the other direction, and then you come down this ramp here, and you can turn in right there, and then already be on the road that the warehouse is on. Instead of having to go around the long way, you'll always beat the AIs doing that. I mean, if you want to, you know, have the race and do the trip legit, then you can do that too, but... Just, if you're in a less powered truck and you need the money, there's a tip for you. Did I say less powered? Less powerful truck? Well, that was the first actual, like, story thing after giving, uh, what's his name with the Peterbilt your lug wrench. So, you know, we're getting into the story stuff now, at least. And I am sorry that this won't be, like, a true first reaction or anything, but I'll try to act as I would if it was my first time seeing it. I tend to be excitable that way anyway. Alright, let's see what we got for trucks real quick. And if there's nothing I'm interested in, I'll probably buy another office somewhere. But, you know, it's nice to have some extra drivers. And I need something that I can put more power into. Even if it's just a 500 horsepower engine, I need more power. I've upgraded this truck as much as I can. Not branches. Uh... Go by price. Go all the way to the bottom. Gotta start at the classifieds over here. Oh, a T6. Those can have up to 600. What I really want, apparently are pretty expensive, is a 378. Let me just look. I want to know what the 378s go up to anyway. 435, 370. Why are these so expensive? Do I have discounts for these ones or something? No? Why are the freaking 378s so dang expensive? They're starter trucks. 435 again. Like, I don't think they have any better engines than. Oh, there you go. 475. That's better than my Sterling. I'm looking to see if they get up over 500. Obviously, the, the 379s are fine. Yeah, see, like, I don't know what the best engine you can get in the 378 is. But apparently it can be more powerful than my Sterling, which only has 450 horsepower. There was one somewhere that had 475. Oh, that's a 379. I got excited. I saw that 600. Where was it? There, nope, that's 435. 335. 335. There. What does it look like? It's a very ugly truck, I'll be honest. But I love how the 378s look. You know, I like the flat top sleeper and everything. And apparently they can be slightly more powerful, but. <laughs> They're so freaking expensive. I don't understand that part of it. Like, why am I going to pay the big bucks for a starter truck? 
just because it's a, is it the pedigree? Is it because it's a Peterbilt? Is that what it is? That might be what it is, you know. All right, is there a cheap Western Star somewhere though? That would be my next choice. And for some reason, these Freightliners are always super cheap. I don't get that either. And the Argozy. These can both go up to 600 horsepower, I believe. But, I mean, 76. I mean, it's, it has a horrible engine. This, 79. I could get that. It's the same amount of horsepower as the truck I'm driving right now. And it can be upgraded. But I don't want to, obviously, because... I just have trouble driving cab over. Oh, there you go, there's another. Yeah, it's not as pretty as mine, is it? But yeah, my next choice, I mean, the T6 is tempting. That can go up to 600, I know it can. That is tempting. The problem is, at the moment, I'd be down on power with that truck. And I wouldn't have enough money to do anything about it. Jeez, where's the first cab over? I mean, the not the first cab over. The frickin' Western Star. Those are up there, too. Like, apparently all the trucks I like are super expensive. Ow. Oh. It also has a super good engine, so I don't really blame it. Yeah, I might go with the T6. I might take the risk. Just gotta find the cheap one again. I mean, the FLD is pretty... That That's kind of tempting as well. I do like the FLDs, and I'm pretty sure this can also go up to 600 horsepower. I'm sure I could find a decent one of those. Nah. Oh, there you go, 565 for cheaper than the Kenworth. The one... I don't know, man. That's a tough decision. I do like the Freightliner, but the Kenworth, you gotta, you know, you got the pedigree there. This is cheaper, and it has more horsepower. I think I'm going with the Freightliner. That'll be 88, so that'll push me down to... It's almost 90, so say 10, 12, 13 grand. Alright, go over here. And how higher? Oh, higher five drivers, there we go. And... Let's jump straight for the best driver we can get so he takes good care of my Sterling. I'll get you. Then go back to manage fleet. Click on the Freightliner, say my truck. And then he should be in the Sterling. Yes. Alright, so now I'll be making a bit of extra money with him. I'm also going to go drop down to like five grand when I go out of here. But I've got a much more powerful truck. I'm probably not going to stay in this Freightliner too long. But I do like the Freightliners. Uh, hold on. Why does it say this truck is blue? I I don't know. But yep, I'm getting the Freightliner. Not enough money. Oh. Wait a minute. When did the Freightliner's price jump up to 111? When did that happen? Hold on.
That's 565. That's 575. It's also a lot more money. I cannot believe... I don't... What even just happened? I am so confused right now. Well, in that case, I'm getting the Kenworth. All right. Oh, the hood's a bit funky. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave this episode here with uh, my new Kenworth. You get a good look around. I mean, gotta love the twin stacks. I can. I. I'd really like to know what happened with that Freightliner. That it jumped up to 111 from 86 or whatever it was. But anyway, this is my new truck, um, so I guess next episode we'll be going to modify it. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching and all that stuff. I'll catch you in the next one.